a fight, a legal one, where I can hit other people with an iron crowbar on their heads, and it's wonderful. I knocked out people's teeth several times, especially in pro fights. I think I would never have got into the ambulance if probably both my arms and legs hadn't been torn off. Obviously, this is not some kind of ballet. Here, men sort things out, figure out who is the strongest of all. For me, the HMB has always been a sport. I've never been a fan of reenactment or of costumes. For me, it's a sport. I hope this video will show a real picture of who we are and what we do. I don't know where to start. Maybe I should start with the fact that it was really weird that I ended up here, because I never planned that. I was a beginning sportsman, a boxer, then trained in the gym. Basically, that was my way. People with swords made me laugh. They trained in our institute. They were homely guys, some strange form of life, weirdly built, with weird outlook on life. They were really odd, funny. That was all weird. Outsiders generally, of course, don't know about this sport. And if they do, then by name only. Something like, you are Tolkienists. You hit people on their heads with sticks. You run around in the woods wearing some kind of rags. The first role-playing games that gathered us took place where I grew up. The place was really beautiful. There were some kind of fairy tale characters. It was very interesting. I was 12 or 13 years old when I got acquainted with that world. You come out with arms, wearing armor, and needs a great physical effort. You fight, you win. It's really cool. And emotions, this kind of sport has been keeping me invigorated and excited for more than 15 years. It's really cool. Generally, there was laughter because there were people wearing some kind of armor. And my imagination started working immediately. The armor of different creatures from different levels of Diablo and so on. It used to irritate me, made me tense. Nowadays, it's a common thing. You listen to all that with some kind of a smile. You're tired of all that, but you need to do your best to win. I've been going in for sports all my life, but mostly the martial arts. I've taken part in a lot of different competitions. When they showed up in our gym, of course, it attracted a lot of attention and jokes. They came, we teased them, and then one of them offered us to go with them and see with our own eyes what they were going in for, and they started to beat each other. I even found my favorite one immediately. That was Alsham Gorinov. He was running, jumping, hitting people with his cudgel, and I was like, God, it could be fun. If you're a healthy person who's going in for martial arts, you can blow off some steam here, especially considering that most people here aren't into sports at all. I don't remember the year, but I had already graduated from school and moved to Kastrama to study at the university. And I had thoughts about that I wanted to learn how to work with arms. I was fond of reading different books, fantasy, science fiction, but I thought that was unlikely in Kastrama. The town was small. I was walking with a girl, wanted to go for a walk to the center of the town. We got onto a bus, but I looked up and saw that we were going in a different direction. I got out of the bus near the bus station, crossed the street, went to a post and saw the advertisement arms skills join the sports club that was a moment of providence for me naturally i came to the first practice and from that moment started my passion for arms i can say this is hell always joining unknown teams fighting with people you don't know because none of the top teams naturally take you 
because my native club is a club of role players and nobody has been going in for historical medieval battles there. At first, it's just some kind of sports for you, like football or something like that, but absolutely confusing. Somebody hits somebody with their reason, there are some clubs, they love each other, they hate each other, it's a full mess like in football. That is how it looks like, very similar, at least it looked so for me at first. But then you get interested and excited, you begin to understand the system, you practice one month, two months, three months, and understand that there are some skills. Somebody is running somewhere, doing something. When I took part in the competitions for the first time, it was Euphora that has been with me since 2005, more than 14 years ago. This kind of sport is very interesting. None of the others hooked me the way that fencing did. And then your first competition, it was like an explosion of stars in my eyes, because you understand nothing. Everybody's running somewhere, hitting somehow, people are shouting, all hell is let loose. You don't understand what is this beating about. In the end, you're on the floor, or somebody else is on the floor, everybody's on the floor. It's all very fast and weird, but in the end, you analyze that and understand that there is some order in the chaos, you can achieve it. And the most interesting that there are lots of alternative branches in the HMB, starting with the number of the categories, one on one, 15 on 15, 100 on 100, 200 on 200. Some people fight with the sword, some with an ax, others with a two-handed sword, and all of them are separate categories. Because in the boxing, you've got two gloves, 100 blows, no more, no less. Do whatever you can in this range. In HMB, there are so many alternatives that it can drive you crazy. You can fight with a halberd for six years and have no idea how to fight with a dueling sword. Or just the opposite, you can be a super cool dueler and fall because of the one stupid hit on the back of the head from an embittered foot soldier who's been dreaming of knocking you out all of his life. There is a phenomenon in HMB, an ambulance taking away a sportsman, which I've seen many times, not only saw, but did it myself. How traumatized sportsmen don't tell anything to anybody and take part in the next fight, outdoing themselves, because you need to go there and win, because nobody but you can go there and win. Nobody will fly down and determine the end of the fight. I never welcome injuring people on purpose. I definitely refuse to do it. I grew up in sports. It was never welcome in our team to injure someone. I knocked out people's teeth several times, especially in pro fights. I remember two times for sure. The first time at our tournament in Kostroma, there came a fighter who had problems with his helmet. And after my hits with the shield, he broke two or three of his teeth. That was really very upsetting. It may seem funny, but when I broke somebody's teeth for the second time, that was easier. The same helmet, the same shield hit. A fighter broke one or two teeth, but he didn't come to me and didn't complain, perhaps. My acquaintances from Isan only told me afterwards what happened in the tournament. I would like to talk about it, but sometimes people say that they would like to injure someone, or that they'd like to do that or something else. It happens mostly on emotions. For example, after the member of your team was injured, you want to do the same right now. It's not my fault it happened because of his armor, but there was a feeling of displeasure. A person who had come to have fun, but got pain, trauma, and had to go thousands of miles away to solve those problems. We don't go in for sports to break people's teeth, injure them, so that was really disappointing. 
I speak for myself that I am personally not capable of injuring somebody on purpose. Of course, it may happen by accident. Everything can happen. For example, you might hit on the restricted zone because you're too tired. During the fighting, there might happen various moments, and you might hit the open zone or the restricted zone by accident. It might happen, but it happens coincidentally. Still, I think that sport isn't a place where you should wish to injure people. It's always very unpleasant to break legs. Actually, I think that sports make people closer. All the anger is released in a fight. And in real life, everybody's kind-hearted and funny, good guys. In a fight, we're enemies. And out of the arena, we can be friends and communicate well. It was 2010, a well-known fighter, Alexei Brunaidionov, hit me under my helmet, on my neck, with a polearm. I was taken to an ambulance, that was a tipping moment for me. Then came a doctor, examined me, I got a new scan, there was a long deliberation, and at last they said there was a very big hematoma. It showed a shadow on the scan. It turned out that was nothing. In two weeks, I took off the bandage and ran normally. My knee was injured badly at the training camp of our national team last year. That was really unpleasant. Thank God, a sprain. No torn cruciate ligaments of the knee, a hip fracture or a sartorius burst. Recovering took time, not as much as after torn ligaments, but it was very hard to walk, and the trauma stayed with me for the next six months. I consulted with our knee club that was formed by a very respected person. I did my best not to let the injury affect my future sports activities. I remember some final fights. My arm was so dried up that it started to hurt wildly. At first, I usually didn't use painkillers because you need to feel pain to understand your arm's condition. Pain is an indicator of an injury. If it is turned off, you don't feel it and may exacerbate a trauma. That's why I don't use painkillers very often, on purpose, to understand how serious an injury is. But from fight to fight, the pain got worse and worse and worse and became really strong. And it wasn't one time, but permanent. And it became so strong that I couldn't fight. Everything was like squealing. So I took a horse shot of painkillers, returned to the fight, finally and fully stopped hurting and continued fighting. But I understood that in fact no one there on the spectator stands is interested in my problems. I must go there and win. That's the only important thing. It turned out that my worst, but not so awful, injury concerns my back. In fact, I even didn't consider it to be a trauma. That was more a process that happens to any fighter who starts training a lot. If you want to be a professional, I need to train a lot. If you want to achieve serious results, you need to train a lot. I had all those thoughts in my head, and maybe I overdid it. When I was 16, 17 years old, everything was all right. But it started to come in all at once, when I started getting closer to 30 years old. The pain is secondary. The championship will be over, a couple of months will pass, and nobody will remember that you were in pain. Even you won't remember that. But your triumph will stay, probably for centuries. I think that everybody understands that very well. Everyone has been risen in these conditions. If you fall, then you are weak. If you are injured, then you are weak. If you can't stand the pain, then you are weak. I grew up in these conditions. My team grew up in these conditions, and we've raised our successes in these conditions. I wasn't in the HMB for a year and a half. That was very hard for me. I lay in bed with extreme pain. I had surgeries. It was a very hard time, both mentally and physically. I couldn't walk. I lost a lot of weight. I'm 194 centimeters high and my weight was just 75 kilos. It's really not enough. But then I met a person, it's a pity not right away, 
who told me what to do. And you don't need money for that. You need to exercise yourself. This is sport. All people who go in for sports know that it's all together. This part can't be separated. You have to pay for everything in this life. You need to pay for every victory. I tried to do exercises in that method within a month and had no result. It hurts a lot. I did everything in pain. I lifted weights and started to do exercises for my back, stretches in this method. But I thought there would be no serious results and I would give it up. In two or three weeks, I started to understand that the pain was going away, very slowly, but still going away. In a month, I recognized what was really happening, and that was cool. I needed to do my best to continue and not to stop. In two months, the pain almost went away. I increased the load and thought that maybe I'd be able to return to my sport, although earlier I had thought that I would finish it and wouldn't be able to continue. I think I would never have got in the ambulance if probably both my legs and arms hadn't been torn off. I would have found a way to continue the fight. I think everybody does the same. Well, a lot of people do the same. I know it very well, and not because they don't get injured, but because they're ready to move forward no matter what. I think this is the reason why an ambulance doesn't get the members of the Russian national team often. Well, of course, when I introduced Albina to my sport for the first time, she was a little bit in shock. As she says, she wasn't afraid for me. She was afraid for the people whom I hit. She is very worried about them. She's afraid I might injure somebody seriously. I think deep in her soul, she worries about me. I hope so. She likes this sport a lot. This is male, obviously. This is not some kind of ballet. Here men sort things out, figure out who is the strongest one. And being a woman, she likes it, of course. She supports me greatly, especially when I'm getting ready for a fight. I'm very lucky that she's a great fitness instructor. She trains me in her own way. Yes, she helps me with CrossFits, for example, with heavyweights, explains how physiology works. She is a specialist in this and a great one, I think. My mom has always supported me going in for sports, and the HMB is no exception. She's been helping me with money and does now because I'm a student. She always says that she's proud of me when I win anything, and when they told me that I was taken into the national team, I called my mom immediately. She was happy, because as she says, a son's dream come true is actually his mother's dream come true. When he was about 14 years old and he was a tactic role player then, I saw how somebody hit him on the head and his head kind of shaked. I was very emotional. I had jitters. I even wanted to restrict all that, to stop that, because I was afraid that my son would become disabled that it was really dangerous. Every, every fight, every practice might end with some kind of tragedy. But that was just a moment because I understood that if I tried to do that, I would break his life break his character and break him at all. So I had to find another way to cope with that. And my way is reading mantras for him when he has an important fight. There are difficulties. The most important thing is the support and help of your loved ones, so they don't strike a discordant note. Of course, if your wife is blowing your mind, pushing you to choose between her and the sports, it will be very difficult to combine everything. In fact, I don't like Bukhurs because they are really cruel. It's meat. You don't know what and where it will hit you. It hurts a lot. 
Hell Bart is special and fashion as well. I remember the last time when my heart sank, I thought that was the end. That was the recent Dyna Cup and Sasha fought uh, for the Bern Club. And I don't remember how, but his arm ended up on the floor and somebody hits him with a halberd on the arm. And I was just thinking, please get up, please get up. That's one of the Dynamo Cups. I probably tripped or fell, made a mistake. My daughter came to me and said, Dad, please don't fall anymore. That was a motivation to stand until the end and not to fall anymore because people were looking at me and my daughter was looking as well. I am the hero for them and I have to prove it. Absolutely not. Just the opposite. 300%. Everyone told me that was bullshit, that was wrong. You are wasting time, they are some kind of Tolkienists in the woods, you all are wasting your time. Andre, why are you doing that? It's bad, it's wrong, you're wasting your time. This is what I've heard in the past 10 years. And then by chance, my mother knew that I became a six-time, seven-time world champion. And she said, oh, you did everything just right. You've been doing a good thing. Good for you. And me, yeah, perhaps. Well, all that 10 years career, 90% of what I've heard was that I was doing everything wrong, that I planned my life the wrong way, that everything was going to hell, that everything was bad. At some point, I got a strong immunity and I started to respond, learn somehow to persuade people of the opposite thing. And then they say, look, you were right. Why am I not there too? Well, of course, you may come and train. We've got practices. No people are hard to persuade, especially intelligent ones. But you can persuade some of them and pull them into the abyss of evil. Honestly, I can't even say what I'm thinking about in a fight. I don't memorize these moments. I only remember planning my moves. Even when I was attacked by two or three at once, I wasn't scared. I'm just thinking where to put my shield or shield myself or run. Adrenaline, yes, fear no. I think yes, sometimes he's scared. Sometimes it's fear, sometimes. You see how he overcomes his fear. You see his uh, willpower. And every time when he overcomes it, it's beautiful. To my mind, if a person feels fear, it's okay. That's what my boxing coach used to say. I respect him a lot. He's a good coach, and I fully agree with him that only fools are never scared. That was his opinion, that every normal person sometimes feels fear. But it's a different matter if you can overcome your fear or if it will own you. When I lose, I take it as an experience. A couple of times, I was extremely disappointed after I'd been Injured, I wasn't selected for the national team and had mixed feelings about the failure, considering that I was a captain of the Russian order and we lost to an inexperienced team in our group. That was really hard. That wasn't easy. But usually I'm waxing philosophical to defeat because I'm not trying to live only for the HMB. The HMB is a big part of my life, but firstly it's a hobby for me and a way to express myself, new ways of self-expression. <laughs> Пошли вперед! I can say, sometimes you are your own worst enemy. I've got a story about it. I was shopping and with peripheral vision saw that a man is eyeing me. 
and my vision was unfocused. I looked at him from time to time. I checked on the things I needed, then turned back, and he continued eyeing me. I couldn't understand what he needed from me. I didn't want to confront him. I wanted to flank him and understand who was staring at me. So I went down the aisle and saw that he was approaching me. I kept calm, like that was none of my business, like I didn't notice anything. I came closer and closer and then started to raise my sight, looked at his body, then into his eyes and saw that the scary anger eyes I was a bit frightened, and then, a oh God, what's going on? In a second, I understood that I was looking in the mirror. That second, I came to a wise thought that perhaps you are your own biggest enemy. In fact, you are fighting with yourself, but in a different avatar. Sometimes your enemy is your exhaustion, unwillingness to train, to make a contribution, to get off your butt. Really, it's cool to be a champion, to be a winner. In 2008, I was invited to a fencing tournament. It was called the Commonwealth Cup, some CIS championship. It took place near Odessa in Belgorod, Denistrovsky, Ukraine. Many countries were present there, an interesting event. And I won the first prize in the sword sword and the third in shield sword. The final fight was with Misha Babinin, who was the champion in the category shield sword. I won became the CIS champion. That was an unexpected victory, one of my first victories away from Kastrama. Not at home, at the outside event. Of course, I was very emotional and I was upset that my father didn't see anything of that because when I was little and didn't win or couldn't manage to do something, he looked at me with some kind of disappointment, like, why did you lose again? When I became a champion, he didn't see that in person. That's why winning is cool. Winning is emotions you can't replace with anything else. There were lots of complicated situations. I remember lying exhausted, dehydrated, without proper sleep for many hours, many days. I understand that I have to go to a final battle and not just appear there, but win and plan some moves that will lead your team to victory and make an effect at a crucial moment. You have not only to be there, but to win. You will confront a well-trained rival who knows you very well, who have been training for this fight for years. And at the same time, you have some organizing questions in your head about the roof that shouldn't fall, the light that shouldn't switch off, the anti-terrorism audit that shouldn't come and close the event. You start to combine all that. And it is not just complicated, it is crazy complicated. And at some point, after one of the final fights, when I was lying exhausted, I understood that I had a serious heartache. I understood that sleep deprivation, overtraining, exhaustion led to the problems with my motor. It started hurting seriously. I had never felt that before. There is a feeling when you are out of oxygen. But in that situation, you don't even understand what you lack and you start to choke. I was lying around on the ground. I understood that I was suffocating, but the problem was not in the oxygen, and I realized that was a very serious situation and that I couldn't get out of it either now nor in the future. And I made a conclusion that I needed to cope with that differently or might end up with nothing one day. The organizational work exhausts you physically and emotionally, and professional sport exhausts you physically because your nerves are trophy at some point. You become a professional professional fighter who hits, chops and feels nothing at all doing that. And I started developing not only in fighting, but also in organizing. 
and it was the brand new branch of my development. You manage people, manage events. It's not easier than to lead an army of a hundred people in the field. Just the same. Just the same preparation, just the same people. You make a plan, a plan of attack, a plan of defense. You have an organized system in your head. You know your weak and strong sides. In fact, your rival is some kind of environment. Your goal, your victory, is to host an event. In this environment, you lead your small battle, your small war. After 10 years of doing that, I can definitely say that organizational work is much more exhausting, takes much more nerves, much more effort, because nerves stress you out much more, much more than physical exertion. People can't see and understand everything, it's a pity, but maybe it's okay. But of course, I would like people to know a bit more about it and understand that it is serious, that it is a serious sport. Not to waste your time on it and not just to boost your ego because of some kind of popularity. I want people to know, not me specifically, but be acquainted with our sport. I want it to become popular. When I talk about it with passion, with pride, with sincerity, my eyes are shining. I talk about it, and I'm glad that I'm going in for it. I want my children to know what I'm going in for, to understand it, and not to ask, Dad, why are you doing this? It's nonsense. You're running around in the woods, beating each other with sticks. I want our sports to become professional, so that there are lots of professional sportsmen People will come who will train every day that will be their way of life like in every other sport. MMA, for example, or football. I wouldn't compare it to football, of course. I don't think it will reach such level. But I can compare it to MMA. The fighters train every day. They have many practices and make a real living at it. I want it because at some point I will have to finish my career as a fighter and if there is a cool replacement at least it will be interesting to watch the sport, watch super mega hits, moves, the crazy coolness of this sport. Of course I want a diploma in a master of sports of an international class in historical medieval battles. In historical fencing, you don't feel yourself just a sportsman, but a man with a capital M. Our ancestors protected their country, their families, fighting with weapons in armor. Guys, if you've been thinking about it, if you have some doubts whether to go in for fencing or not, to start or not, you can come and start training at every age and achieve cool results. I encourage everybody to go in for fencing, it's really cool.